You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm doing something a little bit differently today. I'm going live on TikTok while recording the Finding Careers End show, as well as doing a solo episode, which isn't something I do a whole lot of, but I wanted to do it today uh, because we've been asked the same question in quite a few different ways lately, and it's something that I thought it made sense to stop and address, and so many people are on the job market right now. And it, the question is simple. Should I use a staffing agency when looking for a job? That's something that I know a lot about because I've owned a staffing company for the past 18 years and um, spend a lot of time thinking about the pros and cons of, of using staffing agencies. I know all the criticisms of companies um, by those who haven't had good experiences. And I'm talking about friends, families, you know, neighbors, uh, lots of people that I know really well are hesitant to use staffing agencies at um, at different times in their life. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. Also try to answer any questions live that I get. That's a little bit different um, than something I've done before during a podcast, but what the heck? Why, why not? We'll try some, try it out and see how it goes. So if you're on TikTok, apologies that I'm not looking at the camera very much because I'm recording this, um, you know, for for YouTube as well. But the the first question that we get a lot is how does a staffing agency work? And you know, staffing companies are known by a few names. Agencies used, recruiting firm is used. Uh, sometimes headhunter is used. Temp agency. They generally mean the same thing, uh, but with a couple of differences. So I'll talk about those just, just to start. One is a temp agency. That usually means short-term staffing, where if, uh, let's say, a receptionist is out for the day um, or someone gets sick and, and uh, there's a, a need to cover uh, at work, that's where temp agencies really come into play. So they typically work with people who are available for day-to-day -day work versus a longer term contract um, opportunity. So that's that's temp. Uh, contract staffing generally means a little bit longer. Uh, it could be a matter of weeks, months, or even years. Contract staffing can last a long time. And uh, the way that works is the, uh, the employee who's working is technically an employee of the contract staffing company. They're on their payroll. That's who's responsible for benefits and any perks that they want to offer uh, while the individual is working at the staffing company's client. And the staffing company makes their money um, based on a markup of the hourly rate. But I'll talk about that in, in a few more minutes. Um, the other uh, com common way of a, of a staffing or recruiting firm to work is uh, what I call direct hire or direct placement work. And that's where the end user employer uh, gives a job requirement to the firm who they work with. And uh, the, the firm act, essentially acts on that company's behalf out in the market. They source, they screen, they qualify the candidates, they check their references. They do all the things that an HR department would do. And then once they have uh, the candidate or candidates who they want to present to their client, they send over resumes. They usually some in-depth conversations about the uh, individual's qualifications. But then the end user company does the interviewing and makes the hiring decisions for the most part. So that's uh, what I refer to as direct hire recruiting. Um, and then the third, the fourth, which which is also a form of direct hire recruiting, is is what I consider to be more headhunting or executive search. And the difference in the first three that I described, temp, contract, or even direct, uh, most of the in those cases, the recruiting firm is working on contingency, which means they aren't paid up front by the end user client. They're only paid after a candidate is successfully hired. So that's an important distinction when we're talking about executive search or a headhunter uh, type of scenario where most of the time those are uh, retained agreements, which means the company, the end user company who's looking for the individual pays the recruiting firm a portion of what will ultimately be their full fee upfront to initiate the search. So the most common areas where you see that kind of arrangement is, um, is very senior positions, executive level roles, specialty positions, you know, physicians, that sort of thing, or maybe um, engineering roles where there's only a handful of people um, in a state or even the country who can do a very specific role. So the more niche uh, the the role is, the the more likely it is that that would be done under a retained search agreement. Now, one thing that's important, and this is for anyone who's not familiar with staffing, 
you should never, ever, ever, as a candidate, come out of pocket when paying uh, the staffing company. So that that is, uh, I know, a pretty common consider concern that people have who have never used a, a third party for their hiring before or um, to help them in the recruiting process. If you just never consider it. And I don't even know. I mean, I don't remember the last time I heard of a company who tries to get a candidate to pay them up front. So if you um, are hearing this and and you've encountered that, I'd love to know about it because I just don't really think it is, exists, but it's a misconception. A lot of people are concerned that uh, that they'll be asked to, uh, to hand over a, a check to a recruiting firm. And I, I just never do that. Right. So I'm, I'm sure there's companies that do it. Don't ever um, you know, even consider that for a second. Our fees, if, if you're if you're a recruiting firm, and just like mine, as I've mentioned right at the beginning, I've owned a staffing company for 18 years now. Uh, we're paid by our clients, and there's no exception to that. So candidates should never come out of pocket for anything. Um, so that's so that's how it works. So ba basically, the the staffing company makes their money after they find the employee, and their relationships are twofold and they're equally important. They, the staffing company or recruiting firm has to have a really good relationship with the clients uh, who they're recruiting for. They, as I mentioned earlier, they're operating on those organizations behalf when they go out in the market. So the better the relationship, the more intimate knowledge they have of who the right person is for that company, what a good fit is going to be in terms of a candidate, um, the better their recruiting efforts are going to be. I mean, that's, that's just makes sense. So it goes beyond just understanding a job description. It it's it's about the the corporate culture, the environment, uh, the expectations of the role. Who who's going to be a good fit? Because another misconception is often that uh, recruiters, third party recruiters, are just looking to get a placement, get a candidate uh, in front of their client, and then move on. And I I can assure you that's not the case because most of the time, the recruiting firm is not going to make any money unless the candidate not only gets hired, but stays. So if it's a direct placement role where the, the candidate is hired directly on the payroll of the end user client, um, there's usually a guarantee associated with that, some period where um, you know the, uh, the, the candidate needs to stay and last um, in order for the fee to be paid. But if there wasn't, let's say there's not a guarantee, well, that that recruiting firm's reputation is going to um, to not be good with their end user client. If they're providing candidates who don't stay, no one wants that. Um, they they won't keep those clients very long. So the recruiting firm, if they're even decent, I'm not even going to say good, just even decent at all, they're trying to make sure there's a good fit on both sides. It's not just about getting um, that, the candidate hired, far from it. So that's one incentive. And then on the contract staffing side, which is a, a, you know, probably the bigger part of the market as a whole, the uh, the third party recruiting firm is only getting paid as hours are worked. So if someone stays in a contract role very short term, they're not going to make any money. And if you think about the effort of recruiting, uh, when you're a third party staffing company, your work is all pretty much done up front. I mean, yes, you you, you stay engaged with the individuals you place. Yes, in, in terms of contract staffing, you continue to um, do payroll and handle that each week, but that pales in comparison to the effort of of screening and sourcing and interviewing um, and qualifying candidates on the front end. So it is in everyone's interest, and I, I assure you, um, for anyone who's skeptical of using a third party to um, have those relationships last and not be short term. So. Um, so that's another factor that that goes into it um, in terms of the pros and cons. Um, how should I reach out to a staffing company? So that's another question that's been asked. We we see that a lot. Um, people don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. Um, I would say do what you would do when you're looking for advice on anything. Ask people you know. Ask people you trust. Ask your peers at, at work if you are on the market for a new job. Look to those who you admire your, that are successful and um, it, just like you'd get advice on anything else, get advice from them on what staffing companies they've used in the past. If if they don't have that information, uh, one of the sites that I recommend is, uh, I'll recommend a few. One is the American Staffing Association site. Uh, there is a certain level of criteria, you know, uh, a certain baseline that you know you're getting. If you work with um, uh, a staffing company who's part of ASA, there's, there's high standards that they 
expect their members to adhere to. So that's a great place to start. You can you can search their website. Um, that uh, there's another if you're in the tech space, TechServe Alliance is another is another one. Very very reputable companies in in TechServe. And then you can go to clearlyrated.com. That is a a site that allows. Uh, companies who work with staffing agencies to rank them, as well as the candidates who who are placed by staffing companies. So you can you can actually see both. And so for any local market by specialty or industry, you can see who the top rated staffing companies are. So clearlyrated.com is a great source for finding uh, contact information for recruiting firms. So that, that's it. I mean, you know, you can Google it as well and, and look at Google reviews and that sort of thing. But I, I really like um, Clearly Rated. Um, you know, that's, that's, you probably don't need to go anywhere else. Um, a lot of times people also want to know how many companies should they work with and, and believe that exclusivity should be part of the deal. And that's just not the case either. Um, you uh, don't have any reason to work with only one staffing company. And if you just think about the way the industry works or just logically, um, even the biggest staffing companies in a local market or in, or in a particular industry only have access to a very small piece of the overall pie of what's going on. Um, market share, you know, a, a giant uh, a company in, in a local market may have 10% market share. And even that's enormous. I don't know if anyone too many companies have that that big a market share. So there's lots of staffing companies in any individual individual market. And so it's in your interest as a candidate to have multiple relationships. And, and there's really no cap on that uh, other than there gets to be a point where um, companies do start running into each other and you may spread yourself too thin in terms of just being able to keep up with the different conversations that you have. So Generally speaking, I would say if you are looking in your local market uh, and you are very actively in a job search, somewhere between three and five staffing companies is probably the right number of relationships to have um, to cover the bases. And I would generally ask uh, in qualifying them, of course, check on clearly rated, look at, look at the rating there, but also uh, get a feel for who their clients are. So I'm in Central Florida. I'm in Orlando. Um, everyone who lives here knows who the top employers are. And if uh, someone was on the market and wanted to work for a large employer, they should ask uh, those firms who they're interviewing with and considering working with who their client base is. And, and if you ask that question of everyone you speak with, uh, you'll get a pretty good sense for um, whether you have the market covered. So, so I would, I would, I would highly recommend that when you're qualifying. Um, so again, three to five firms, you can always do more. If you're looking at a national search, by all means, is if you can keep it organized and straight, there's no cap on, on how many you should use. So, so go, so go nuts, right? That's fine too. Um, how should you connect with a staffing agency? That's a question that, that we were asked. Uh, get on the phone, call them, connect with them on LinkedIn. Recruiters are huge LinkedIn users. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Re recruiters, both uh, third-party recruiters like staffing companies as well as corporate recruiters spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. That's a given. Um, connect with them there. Follow the company pages of the firm that you're working with and also pick up the phone and call them. Engage directly with the recruiters. Build relationships. You know, let them get to know you. Let them understand what kind of role you're looking for, what your criteria is, the more ex of an exchange that you have, the better uh, your results are going to be. So recruiters um, really enjoy and appreciate candidates who are very clear in, in what they're looking for. It makes the recruiter's job easy. So we're always, you know, being, being in that industry for a long, long time, when we have a need that comes across our desk, when, our, when a client calls and said, I need someone with a specific skill set, the best thing that that uh, we have is is a pipeline of candidates who uh, we already understand the criteria of of what they're looking for. We understand their job requirements. We understand you know, um, what kind of commute they they'll tolerate. What their compensation needs are. I mean, the more intimate exchange you can have with a recruiter, the better. Because I, as I said a few minutes ago, recruiters are absolutely looking to to connect uh, candidates who not only are qualified for a job, but want the job, will accept the job and stay in the job. It's not about getting a short-term win. That's not a win at all in the world of a third-party recruiter. It, it's just it's just not. So 
take the time to invest in those relationships. And, and look, I mean, you don't, you're not going to click with everyone, just like anything in life. It, it, it makes um, complete sense that you're, you're going to, you're going to have some, you know, some are going to be better than others, right? I mean, not, not all recruiting firms and not all individual recruiters are alike. No, no surprise there, but when you click with someone and you feel comfortable with them and you've asked about who their clients are and you've checked them on clearly rated and you have lots of confidence that they're um, an organization who will represent you and your interests well, go ahead and invest time with them. Get together with them in person if you're able to. A lot of recruiters will do that. Get together for coffee, get together for breakfast, go by their office if they have one. Again, recruiters really like working with candidates who they know intimately and 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 have a really good personal feel for because when a recruiter is is presenting a candidate for consideration, their rep, their reputation is tied to that. So if, if the candidate's not a good fit, the the client who they're working with is going to be skeptical of uh, being able to trust a recruiter. And believe me when I say, there's no shortage of third party recruiting firms. I mean that is something that is in high, <laughs> great supply. So if um, if a recruiter isn't doing a good job for their client and consistently presents candidates who aren't qualified, that company will replace them with someone who who delivers a whole lot uh, better re results. I, I promise you that. I mean, that's th there's a line out the door of of recruiters looking to work with um, with end user or employer. So um, invest the time with them. They'll appreciate it and and your results will be better. And 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 the real goal with that is that once you establish rapport and a relationship with a recruiter, when they call you, and they know what you're looking for in a role, then you know you kind of fast forward through the process and can get your resume to the front of the line. So that's one of the big pros. I want to make sure I mention that too, of why yeah, I'm answering the question, why should I work with a staffing agency? And, and may, maybe why not? Um, if anyone wants to know that too, um, I don't really have a whole reason. I don't really have reasons as to why not generally. I do have reasons why you should disqualify one uh, you know, firm or another, or one recruiter or another, if they're not treating you well. But one of the things that, that a third-party recruiter can do that an individual candidate cannot is get that resume to the top of the pile. So if you just think about if you see a job opening and you're applying for it yourself, either through a company website or posted somewhere like LinkedIn or Indeed, you can you can only be so aggressive. You 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 may get bold, and, and most people don't do this, although you should. That's that's a little side bit of advice. Don't just submit a resume and then sit back and wait. See if you can find out who the hiring manager is or the recruiter in charge of the role. If there's an email address available, email that person separately. So the goal of, of submitting your resume is always to give yourself the best chance for success and to stand out where you can. So if you're submitting your information individually, do that. Take those steps. Most people don't. I, I can guarantee you will increase your chances significantly. But if you use a recruiter, now you're having your resume delivered in an entirely different way. It's not going to be one of potentially a few hundred who are blindly um, that are blindly submitted through an online application process. It's going to be hand delivered to the hiring manager, the HR person, in, in terms of uh, who's responsible for hiring, whoever that is. So that is an advantage to working with a recruiter that an individual candidate on their own simply can't have. It just yeah, you know, just makes sense when you think about it practically. So I am a big fan. If I were on the job market right now, and and I'm hopefully never find myself there again, because that would mean something went really bad with um, with my personal situation with Zengig and, and and my staffing company. But it can happen. And and if it happened tomorrow, if everything changed for me, first thing I would do is figure out which recruiters I should be working with. So even though I have a big network and I know not lots of people in that in the in the job space, I still want help because it's free. And it's extra leverage, it's extra eyes and ears and people working for me and, and that. So that's how everyone who's on the job market should think of a recruiter as well. It's free labor. It's free help. I mean, it, it, there's no downside to, to that. So I've got a couple of questions here. I'm going to go off script a little bit. Um, how can a recruiter ensure that job opportunities presented uh, to me are a good fit? Okay, so I talked about that a few minutes ago. I'll go back to it. What you give in terms of information to the recruiter equates to what you'll get in return. So you'll know you're working with a quality recruiting firm or individual recruiter if they're going to invest time understanding what your needs and desires and criteria are beyond what's on your resume. 
So resume is just cover of book, right? It's how I look at it. It's got to be a good cover for it to be interesting. It, you know, I'm not dismissive of resumes at all. They're, they're a very important tool in the hiring process, but the real action happens beyond the resume. And so if you are working with a recruiter who um, just wants your resume and says, you know, hey, thanks for sending it. I'll let you know if something, if something comes up that's a good fit. Don't expect to hear from them. Th that's, not, um, that's not really how it should be done, not, not when it's done right. On the other hand, if you engage with a recruiter who's willing to take time to understand what you're looking for as a candidate, what kind of company, big or small, what kind of environment you're looking for. Are you looking to, um, you know, are you super ambitious and you're looking for uh, companies that only offer upward mobility that you can really see? Or are you kind of a passive employee where you just want to get through the day and, and you don't really care about moving up in the world? It is not for a recruiter to have an opinion on what's better in any of these scenarios. And I mean, everything you can think of, commute, remote versus, you know, in office. I mean, you name it, there's so much um, that goes into what an individual may prioritize in terms of what's important to them in a job. And it's not for the recruiter to have an opinion on, but it is uh, on the recruiter to understand for that individual candidate, what are their motivations and drivers? And then you match those with the need. And that's that's recruiting when it's done right. So the question was about how do you ensure that um, you're going to be a good fit for the job? Well, you can't guarantee this stuff, right? I mean, it's still uh, a world where um, there's a lot of moving parts and you know there's a lot of subjectivity to it, um, to the recruiting process, even when it's done right. Um, it's not a perfect system, not when people are involved, right? Go, go figure. But... If you take the time to invest in, in the relationship with the recruiter and the recruiter is willing to take the time to invest in you as a candidate, it, it gives you much, much better chance of success. So highly recommend that. And I equally recommend being uh, relatively dismissive of recruiters. Don't expect anything from them if they're not willing to invest time with you as a candidate on the front and even when they don't have an immediate opening. Um, should you still reach out to a recruiter if they don't have a position on their website? Yes, absolutely. The 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 world of third party recruiting hap, turns very quickly. Uh, positions come in from minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, and then they go away very quickly. So that's a big difference between corporate recruiting and third party recruiting, where uh, corporate HR departments tend to have positions open longer. Um, they if you just think about how they operate, it's not, they're not a sales organization. They're not paid um, the same way. They're, they're part of a, of, of a bigger company, their department within a bigger company where a recruiting agency or, or firm um, only gets paid when those positions are filled. And so it behooves them to turn positions much, much faster, which again is in the candidate's interest because they they don't want grass to grow. They don't want delay to happen. They want to find the right candidate for the job as soon as possible. Not only is that how they get paid, but they're probably competing against other recruiting firms looking for to fill the position as well. And they're looking to close that rollout as soon as possible. Because if you're in the recruiting space, you know that the longer uh, a job stays open, a longer a candidate stays in play, the greater the likelihood that it's going to go away and you're not going to be successful in that recruiting effort. So it's another advantage to working with a third party recruiter. They are your ally, a hundred percent an advocate when it comes to speed in getting you, know, you as the candidate across the goal line, not only your resume in the hands of the person who's going to be doing the interviewing, but also fast forwarding the interview process along the way too. It, it, they're absolutely um, on the same side of the table as you. So, so know that as well. Um, and so should you work with a small agency or a well-known company? I'm biased there because, um, you know, I have a, uh, my staffing company is, is, um, is small compared to a lot of the public companies out there. There's billion dollar staffing companies. I would say one isn't better or worse because it's really all about the individual recruiters and, and the local market and clients they're working with. So you could have a very large company that has a remote office in your market um, who, if, if they're not, uh, if, if that's not a, a, an office that has a lot of strength in terms of who their recruiters are in there or their client base, there may not be a very good experience versus a local company in that same market who's established, 
has a great reputation, has a great client base, strong recruiters, you're going to have a much better experience with um, that smaller company based on the individuals who were in that, uh, you know, who were there, but the opposite can be true, right? There's lots of, um, of small companies who, who aren't, uh, who aren't the best. And of course the big companies are big for a reason. They're, they're doing something right. Um, and they have over a long period of time. So I really think you have to make those decisions at a very individual level based on your own interactions. Um, while I already recommended going to clearly rated or, um, to see who, who client local clients and candidates have, um, have voted as the best organizations. You know, Forbes puts out a list of the most admired recruiting firms. You can search for that. Um, American Staffing Association has high standards that they expect all their members to adhere to. So you can go to those sites and get a, a good list. But ultimately, it doesn't matter what someone else's experience was. It matters um, how those individuals treat and interact with you and and you know, base those decisions um on your own experience, and then hopefully build relationships that last over time. So if a recruiter work, moves from one firm to another or one city to another, you can keep those relationships. I mean, it, 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 they shouldn't be short term if, if they're, if they're right. And if you really have the best uh, recruiters working with you, they'll call you even when you're not on the job market. I mean, that's really when it's done right, where someone knows your, um, your objectives so well, and you've established a kind of relationship with them where when they get a perfect fit, uh, for you, they'll pick up the phone even when you're not looking. So that's that's utopia in the, in the world of recruiting, both on the candidate and the recruiter side. So I think that I think that's it. Unless there's any more questions, um, if you've if you've been with me this long, I appreciate it. Thanks for thanks for joining. Thanks for participating today. And um, hit me up if you have things you want me to address in the world of hiring, staffing, recruiting. Anything along those lines, that's why Zengig exists, as I mentioned, after owning a staffing company for 18 years. Uh, I feel that uh, my team and I are ready to help candidates, ready to help people in the workforce. We want to share the information that will benefit as many people as possible. And so everything's on the table for us to answer. So if you have things you're wondering about it or have never asked anyone before, hit us up, put us on the spot, and we'll we'll either get back on live or um, respond with content on zengig.com. So check out the website if you haven't already, and we'd appreciate your feedback. So thanks again for, for listening and uh, talk to you soon.